about the Rockets, but I have something way more fun for you right now, Bryce. Okay. Have you seen, have you looked at Twitter like since we've been doing this? Um. Oh yeah, I saw yours. I, well, Folks, uh, while we've been recording, and oh, this is something oh, that it got like, more serious. Yeah. Uh, so by by more serious, like, I'm, I think it's happening. Uh, I'm pretty sure, based on the way this is being reported, and it looks like Pete Thamel is like saying that this is happening. Uh, the Athletic reported it that it's serious. Uh, I mean, who else? Norlander said it's serious. This is a thing. I mean, Shams tweeted about it 12 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, John Calipari is reportedly in serious talks and, according to Pete Thamel, finalizing a deal to be the head coach at Arkansas next year. So let's talk about this. Okay. Uh, I kind of got so so here's let's let's like go full picture on this first andy enfield decides to leave usc to go to smu smu fires rob lanier after two years in a firing that like people were like kind of questioning at the time that like didn't make a crazy amount of sense enfield leaves usc to go take that job that like people had questions about opening Eric Musselman leaves Arkansas to go take USC because Enfield took SMU. And now SMU firing its coach has been the domino that leads to John Calipari potentially leaving Kentucky. This stuff happens like in crazy ways, man. This stuff truly happens in like flat out wild ways. With the coaching carousel. So here's here's the background on this. Being at the Final Four this week like I was, I was in a lot of rooms, talking to a lot of people that have way more power in this industry than I do. We had a lot of questions about what exactly was happening with the Arkansas search because there were the Chris Beard reports for a minute. There was the Jerome Tang piece of it for a minute. And after those two things happened, Truly, like at least as of like Friday, and then it went kind of silent on Saturday, it felt like, where everyone was still asking the questions. There was like a real thought of what in the world is Arkansas going to do? Like nobody really had a great indication. Like it didn't seem like, like people like brought up Bucky McMillan. Like that didn't seem like it was going to happen. Uh People brought up like other like mid-major names that didn't, those didn't seem like they were going to happen. People brought Will Wade. Like I, I, we'll talk about Will Wade in a minute here because that'd be amazing. But uh, someone brought up like Will Wade to me, and I guess like that didn't seem like it was going to happen. And there was like a lot of questions about what in the world Arkansas was going to do. Nobody really had like a great feel for it. It sounded like. And now here we are today. I started to get like texts and calls about this. I don't know, like while I was on the plane, I guess from Phoenix to Portland. So like midday Pacific time, like something like that. Like a couple people like shot me a note, like asking like, is this a thing? Like, what is this? And I was like, I don't know. Like if you're telling me it's a thing, maybe it's a thing. Um, but I, I haven't been able to get a handle on Arkansas. So, you know, ask somebody else that knows because I'm not like some insider on the coaching carousel. I know people, but like, I'm not nearly as connected as like Borzello and, you know, Norlander are on that front. Um, but I started to get like text messages about it earlier in the day. And I was like, this is interesting. It seemed real by like, you know, four o'clock, like it might actually have, like there, there might be some legs to it. But the thing is that, John Calipari kind of does this, right? Like he kind of flirts with things. Like I'd heard rumors about him flirting with like a different job earlier this year that I don't really want to say. Cause like, I don't know, like it's out there. I don't know what people know it's and I don't know if it's worth reporting and people will take it, but like I'd heard like some things and then he decided to recommit to Kentucky. Right. 
I guess that, like, to me, Arkansas probably does make the most sense for Cal. The piece of this that is interesting, and I guess that why this is happening, is he is very close with the Tyson Chicken family. Okay. That's what um, I believe, like, Kyle Tucker reported that, and, like, other people have reported that at this point. This is something I had no idea about until today, right? Like, I'm not sitting here saying that... Um, saying that this is a thing, right? Um, but, like, I, I truly just, like, don't even know what to say about this. It feels crazy to me that we're at a place where John Calipari is, like, actually not going to be the coach at Kentucky because, like, yeah. it's hard for me to remember a time where John Calipari was not the coach at Kentucky. But, like, it, look... Pete Thamel is saying that they're finalizing this. Like, here, I'll bring it up on the screen while we're talking. Uh, if Pete Thamel is saying that this thing is going to be final, like, I, Pete, Pete's a guy that has way more sources than I do. So, like, Pete, uh, if Pete nailed this, uh, you know, Pete is somebody that I would believe to nail this, I guess, is what I would say. Uh, according to Pete Thamel, up on the screen here, as you can see, uh, John Calipari is finalizing a five-year deal to become the next coach at Arkansas. Deal is supposed to be completed in the next 24 hours. And just to confirm that it is indeed the actual Pete Thamel and not a fake account. <laughs> there you go. It is the real Pete Thamel. Um, what is your thought on this? Like this feels crazy and insane and like, I don't even know what to do. Uh, yeah, about this. no, like this is not something I, I thought this whole thing was over, right? Like whenever they lost in the tournament, we got the immediate reactions, right? And the talk of the buyout and what was going to happen. And was this the time that was this the time to move on from Cal? And it was like, nothing ever came up. So I had moved on and I don't follow this stuff super close anyway. But you know, when it's Calipari in Kentucky, you kind of pay attention and it's like, okay, no, you know, it's done, you know, and then you, you know, Musselman and Enfield and you follow all that stuff. I, I definitely did not know this Tyson food chicken, whatever Tyson chicken thing. Um, apparently they're the biggest donors to Arkansas athletics. So I would assume there was a major uh, financial contribution from them <laughs> coming as part of all of this. So I, I guess my immediate questions are, I kind of wonder now where the conversations between Cal in Kentucky went. What does Kentucky do? And how much is this payday for Cal going to Arkansas? Well, yeah, like that's a real factor here because Cal was making serious, serious money at Kentucky. Um, I should be able to look that up because it's a public university. Um, um, it, it's got to be like crazy, crazy money, I would think. So Cal at Kentucky was making $8.539 million. Uh, and his buyout was $35 million. I would imagine that like the way that they're handling this buyout is like, hey, we all want to wash our hands of this. Like, let's just cut bait and move on and, you know, kind of handle this the way that we handle it. Um, the relationship just like publicly always seemed like a little bit strained between him and Mitch Barnhart to me. Like it seemed like there was like a weird energy there always. So like, I'm not wildly surprised, I guess that this is happening. Kentucky fans. I mean, God knows that I think they were, I think they're ready for a change. I think this is a home run for, Arkansas, given where their search seemed to be sure. going recently. Like, look, like if I was them, I probably would rather hire Will Wade than Cal, but it seemed like that wasn't going to happen. And that wasn't like a realistic potential outcome. So I'm not going to sit here and say that, uh, say it one way or another, that it's this type of way or the other way. It's just stunning. Like, it really is stunning to me that John Calipari is not going to be the coach at Kentucky. Uh, having said that, I am the same person that came on this podcast the Sunday after the NCAA tournament and said, yeah, 
it's time for John Calipari to never coach a game at Kentucky again because not being able to figure out the Oakland zone whenever everybody on planet Earth knew that Oakland was going to play that zone was a serious problem to me. Like, serious, serious issue to me. Uh, I can't. I still like him flabbergasted that they lost that game. That that team, other than Connecticut, that was the most talented team in the country this year. I think, truthfully, yeah, no, like yeah. th- that was the most talented team in the country outside of Connecticut this year. I think. Yeah, I th- I thought I felt pretty good about. T- I'm obviously this is what happens. When you try to fill out a bracket. I mean, the only thing I've gotten right so far is Connecticut, and if they win tomorrow, oh. then I guess I pick the winner, and uh, I don't know. That's something. Um, not really whenever it's Connecticut since they were the favorites, but yeah, I, I had Kentucky in the final four. I thought they had the the floor spacing. I thought they had the scores. The defense was always a question, but like, I didn't think they were going to lose because they couldn't go figure out his own defense. I mean, we talked about it leading up. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I still like Cal's, you know, Cal is still a, a big name in this industry that wins mm-hmm. games and gets high level talent. And I, I don't assume that stops at Arkansas. So I'm with you. Yeah. I, I mean, Maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like this is a really good hire for Arkansas based on whatever other options were out there that you know, I don't know what all of those were. And then again, my next question goes to, okay, now where does Kentucky go from here? You know, like how, how do they, cause you know, Cal's been there for a while. Like it, it's been a, a huge part of it, but that's a big time uh, program. So I'm sure that coaching search will be fascinating to watch and see who they're able to connect and and bring in to replace him so goodman is reporting right now uh a that cal's contract is going to be between seven and a half and eight million dollars per year so like not taking much of a pay cut to do this right like you know somewhere around a million maybe and the big thing here is that he will have access to an nil package for players that will rank among the best in college basketball in excess of $5 million per year. Uh, That is a wild number. Uh, It's a a very, very high number. It's not like, that's that's among the highest numbers in the country. Like, I don't want to say like what other teams have because like I don't have it confirmed necessarily, but like I hear rumors of, you know, the SEC having, you know, something like an average of like 3 million, right? So for... Arkansas to have like real, like almost two X the, you know, number of what like the average seems to be like maybe a little bit more than three seems pretty wild. I I know some numbers of a pretty high level program and I only know a couple of the players and just knowing what that would start with those, with a couple of those guys. And then, you know, kind of just guessing what everybody in the program gets five million is probably still beats that. And this is a, again, like I'm kind of like you, like even more so, like I definitely don't know this for fact, but just what I've heard. And this is a big time program. So man, that's, yeah. I mean, they're going to be competitive. They're going to have dudes. Um, yep. I instantly also now think like, uh, wonder guys who are unsigned in the 2024 high school class. Um that he could swing and bring in and man, this will be fun. So, so here's the real, here's the great start to this conversation, right? So Kentucky has, you know, one of the three best recruiting classes in the country. They have Boogie Flan going, they have Jaden Quaintance going. And by the way, Jaden Quaintance has to spend two years in college yeah, because he is coming early. He was Uh, so good. The game I watched the other day. I like that kid. Jaden Quaintance is a stud, like a very real dude. Yeah. Uh, they have some to surreal coming in. They have Travis Perry coming in. I'd imagine that Travis Perry, you know, might be more likely to stick to the Cal or to the Kentucky commitment. Uh, Carter Knox, Billy Richmond, like they have a lot of dudes going there. Like, do these guys follow Kentucky, follow Cal to Arkansas? Do they stay at Kentucky? We'll see. Right. Like that's a, that's a huge question right now. And I think a big piece of it is where does Kentucky go from here in terms of the hire? You know, the name that has always come up in these things, like this is public, like people bring up Scott Drew's name all the time if Kentucky was going to move on. Like Scott Drew from, look, I don't know. I I don't know if he's available or not. 
Scott Drew would be a great hire. <laughs> I know that. Scott can really coach. Scott can really, really coach. Uh, he is a fantastic program builder. Uh, you know, really good dude. Like you could really, really sell uh, Kentucky hiring Scott Drew. I just don't know if he'll like. I don't know if he'll want to do it. I don't know if he'll be at the top of Kentucky's list. But like, Kentucky's list is the biggest names in college basketball. Like, Nate Oates is probably on Kentucky's list. The problem is Nate Oates has an eighteen million dollar buyout. Uh, Bruce Pearl like would be on Kentucky's list. Bruce Pearl has like a sixteen million dollar buyout. I think. Tommy Lloyd is probably on Kentucky's list. Tommy Lloyd just signed a deal where he has an eight-figure buyout, I believe. So, like, a lot of the best coaches on the market may or may not be on the market. Uh, like, depending on how much Kentucky boosters are willing to pay to get them out of deals. And I don't know what Scott Drew's buyout is because Scott Drew's buyout is um, – Baylor's a private university, I believe. So, um, you just, like, don't know what that number is, really. So Drew and that staff have also done a good job. Like they've re they've recruited some high level players recently as well. You know, so it's like you know for a while it seemed like you know they were developing dudes, and now they're really putting dudes in the in the NBA. Jacoby Walter was a high level recruit. You know, you know Eves Misi is a guy that like maybe not as widely re you know, but like they build that program into something real, and then he's done it in Waco, Texas. So like you know, and ba a Baylor program that he brought a lot of. A lot of the success around that program has been while Scott Drew has been there. And so, yeah, you take him to a historic program like Kentucky with the resources he would have behind him there, and you would assume he could do some really nice things. So, man, like this is all – there are like a million angles going in my head. Like Arkansas's roster is like totally clear, by the way. Like they have like nobody right now. They might have like one or two guys, but like it's like – the deck is like completely cleared. Um, yeah, like, so like the top of the market, like Dan Hurley, right? Like you try and get Dan Hurley, but like, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving Connecticut if I'm Dan Hurley. I'm like a legend at Connecticut now. Yeah. Like they're going to probably have to give him another raise, right? Like you stay there. I think like that's it's easy. Hurley's already making like 5 million according to the USA today. Like he's going to be making six and a half or seven probably after this year. You win back-to-back -back titles, or you go first, second. It's easy, right? Matt Painter, like, you know, maybe Matt Painter is an attempt, but Matt Painter, like, loves Purdue, right? Like, is, is he really going to leave Purdue? And, oh, by the way, like, $16 million buyout. Uh, I like TJ Otzelberger. Like, I think TJ Otzelberger's done, like, an amazing job at Iowa State. Uh, $18 million buyout right now, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you won't find a bigger TJ Osselberger fan than me. Like, I, I've said it before. I got to watch him practice this summer, and I love the way he runs his program. So, um, yeah, I think, he, I think he's really good. I think he's really, really good. So, like, they're going to get somebody spectacular to run Kentucky. Somebody will do this. Like, I, I want to be clear. Which is another domino, Sam. Like, that's this is the other thing. Like, they're going to go steal somebody. And then yeah. now that team two weeks from now or however long this takes, now that program's going to have to find somebody. And like this thing is going to continue in the portal era, in the NIL era. Like, can you imagine what this may do to the portal as well? Oh, yeah, it's going to be insane. Like My, my life is going to be over for the next week. Like the portal is going to ruin my life. Uh, the piece of it that's interesting is I wonder if they tr like do try and get Billy Donovan bring him down yeah like chicago's not going anywhere fast we know that but like billy donovan seems like he likes coaching in the nba so maybe he doesn't want to go back to college and that always seemed to be the thing with billy donovan like he doesn't really want to go back to college so maybe the nil like idea has changed that sure. recruiting now is like hey like if you can go and pay the most money for kids offers there right like yeah. you're you're kentucky you have a bunch of money like it's probably not a problem if you can convince billy donovan to go uh here's the thing it was time it was time right it was time for the calipari era to end at kentucky he is a legend at that school and forever should be a legend 
at the University of Kentucky, no matter how it ended, right? Brought them a title, brought them back from like purgatory when Billy Gillespie was there, right? Like Cal should always be positively remembered by Kentucky fans. Uh, and he's now not like drastically overstaying his welcome, right? Like he's now you know, stayed his, stayed his course, maybe stayed like an extra year beyond what Kentucky fans wanted. But like, if it's one extra year, that's okay. I think this probably ends up helping the John Calipari legacy to leave now as opposed to later. We'll see how it goes at Arkansas. Like, I do want to talk about that too. Like, we're talking about it mostly from the Kentucky angle because like, I find the Kentucky angle really interesting. But yeah, like, I, I mean, who do they go get is an open question. It, it's truly a, to me, it's a who's who of college basketball. Like, they will get some truly elite basketball coach, yeah. I think. And I, I am, I'm genuinely really interested. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. No, I, I think we, we, we touched on it with Arkansas and, and Cal. I think, like you said, they have a, blank slate there you and and is there a better time in the history of college hoops to have a blank slate roster than the portal era with what sounds like a ton of nil money you know uh high school recruits you know again you know who signed who's not how can you get out like all of that stuff like this this is going to change the landscape and arkansas is going to be a major player in that along with kentucky and like i say it it's going to make for some fascinating stuff here over the next month and but yeah, I mean, I, I tend to agree with you. I think, you know, where a need for a change from both sides is a real thing sometimes in life. Yep. And it seems like this was the time. And so I think this could end up being a win for a lot of different aspects in terms of maybe it's better for Cal to get out of there and do something new. New energy comes with new opportunities. This could be really good for Arkansas, you know, bringing in Cal and then maybe even for Kentucky, right? Like, again, you get a new energy, a new voice, you know, into the program. Sometimes, sometimes it works. And, and I'm not saying it's all going to work. Maybe whoever they hire doesn't do a good job or, you know, maybe Cal doesn't do well. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but it, a lot of it makes sense to me. And um, it, it brings in a lot of it, excitement. So what you do, maybe less sleep, but a lot of excitement. The funniest thing about this, by the way, is – John Calipari and Mitch Barnhart, like two weeks ago or whatever, like went up together on that, like, it, I don't know if it was like a radio show or like TV show or whatever, and like felt like they like kind of wrapped their arms around each other and they were like, yeah, like we're, we're all good. John's going to be the coach next year. Like Mitch Barnhart has to be furious. So like, that's what, yeah. <laughs> Like that dude's got to be so, or like, he's got to be like, I don't know. Like, is he happy? Yeah. Just saying, like, are you sure he's, he's not ecstatic? Like, Hey, he's gotta be maybe. pissed that like this happened like in this way, but like, also you've got to be like, got of happy that it happened. Right. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, like maybe he's, maybe he's pumped right now. Cause he got rid of cow, got rid of and in quotes, and now he can go get his guy and, and make a hire. So maybe he's like, he may have an influx of energy right now going perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I look, know. man, K Kentucky is an amazing job. It's a truly incredible job. Uh, look, I I've always been like a Kentucky basketball fan because I, I truly love Kentucky basketball fans because I know for a fact that those people watch those games because those dudes – very, very seriously will get detailed on why they disagree with you. Yeah. And like, I might disagree, but like, I respect the fact that they watch those games and like, come at me with like real angles. Right. I'm like, shit. Like, yes, let's do this. Like, let's talk about this because I, I really have an immense respect for Kentucky fans. They care about that program so much. And I, I really, really love that. They love it as much as they do. You know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. And it felt like Kentucky fans were pissed at this. Like they were pissed that Cal was going to be back. They were ready for this to go. It felt like the energy was down. It felt like it was ready to 
just turn over in some way, right? I'm glad for them that this is happening. Look, it might turn out to be like abominably bad. You never know. Like who the hell knows what's going to happen here? Who yeah. the hell knows like if the next guy will be successful? But it feels like there's more uh there's more energy now. Like it feels like there are a lot of boosters that probably will get re-engaged. There are a lot of like fans that'll probably be a bit more excited. And I'm excited about that because Kentucky is a, Kentucky is a program where college basketball is better when Kentucky is great. That's my opinion. College basketball is drastically better when Kentucky is real and legitimate and awesome. So I need Kentucky to be as good as possible. I genuinely like people think that like I joke, like I'm, other media people like make fun of me, like not make fun of me, but like, they'll like ask me like why I like Kentucky fans. And that's why they're crazy. They know they're crazy. And I know that they give a shit about this is why I love them. Like I feel the same way about Indiana fans. I know Indiana fans like give a shit about this. I like fan bases that like really truly care. I'm all about that, man. I'm all for it. Uh, in terms of like Arkansas, we haven't talked a lot about Arkansas, I guess. We'll see who comes with Cal, what players, everything like that. I'd imagine that like if that number NIL wise, like I may be able to give some of those kids a raise that were like planning on coming to Kentucky. So like they might come. Uh, look, I don't think John's a very good coach anymore on the court. In terms of adjustments and in terms of like being able to make moves on the fly in games, I think there are just better coaches out there. But here's the one thing I will say. I have a lot of respect for how John Calipari made genuine changes this summer and made the offense a lot more modern and made the offense. He heard it for years. It took him years to change it, right? It took him so long to be willing to actually do anything. But he did it, and I think he deserves credit for doing that. And I hope he brings that to Arkansas. I hope he for realizes sure. that like this is the way to play basketball in the modern age. If he looks at Arkansas as like, uh, I'm going back to the old Cal. I just saw Vance Wahlberg, the originator of the dribble drive motion, get hired at Fresno. I'm going back to that. It's going to be a catastrophe for Arkansas. Like it won't yep. go well. I don't think people will be just dis- Arkansas fans will be disappointed. Won't be as successful as Musk was. Like, think about this. John Calipari at Kentucky had to live up to the Billy Gillespie era. The Billy Gillespie era at Kentucky was two years of total shit show. They went like eight and eight in the SEC is last year. They finished. 18 and 13 his first year, and they went eight and eight in the SEC the second year. Like that, that was a total mess that ended in total mess. Trying to remember like the exact circumstance, like how Billy Gillespie ended up like getting like you know fired or whatever. It was uh yeah, it was like an incompatibility, according to Barnhart. Um and like he failed to sign like a formal contract, like the whole thing was super, super weird with with Billy Gillespie. It was very strange. He's going now to Arkansas, where the Eric Musselman era, like they made two Elite Eights and a Sweet Sixteen back to back to back before this year, which was like catastrophic. Yeah. The odds are that this will be a downgrade for Arkansas. It feels good because the search seemed to be like in a strange place as it's happening. And like the process of kind of landing here is weird and interesting, but like the odds are this will not be as successful as the Mus era because it's really freaking hard to make back-to-back elite eights and a sweet 16 in a four year stretch. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, like you said, it's coming in with expectations after what was there before you. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still like, we know he's going to bring in talent. So can he continue to modernize or grow as a coach? 
during the 40 minutes of play and and all of that stuff um will will kind of be where it's at and he, he's gonna have talent to go win big every year if he can figure it out so like that's but you're right there you know this last year was not great for arkansas at all but before that some real successful seasons so it's you know arkansas fans are gonna be expecting a lot like he's definitely gonna have to live up to some some high expectations especially when you factor in the contract and uh, the nil package that was referenced earlier yeah man all of this is like kind of mind-blowing by the way like we were going to talk about the final four um i was at the final four i sat courtside it was fun <laughs> like re remember when our plan was to talk about like Zach Eady and Donovan Klingon, and Donovan. like I was going to talk about Cam Spencer for a while and, and Stefan Castle, and yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened? Like, I'll say this John Calipari is the only person that could have made us forget about that. <sighs> and so, for that, he's you know, like, he's like kind of a legend. It was the first thing I thought of, too. Like, really, the Sunday of the final four before you know, I mean, there's only one basketball game to watch tomorrow. Um, the NBA is taking the day off and we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're not going to talk about Klingon versus uh, Edie, which I'm super excited about. Everybody's going to be talking about Calipari and who's the next coach at Kentucky and what players are going where. Like they stole the show of final four, um, at least until the ball tips tomorrow night. Yep. Uh, if I had to put a Kentucky list together, I'm calling Danny Hurley. I'm calling Nate Oates, I'm calling Billy Donovan, I'm calling Scott Drew. Those are the four to me. Um, 